anything, anything else before we move on? For the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you can, please don't find that in the Bible, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You can write alongside that hindering spirit. How many of you know there is a hindering spirit? Mm -hmm. Paul talks about that. Talk about the Thessalonian mm -hmm. church. He said, I came here once, we'll come even again. But Satan, what? Hindered me. So Satan will do everything he can to keep you from reaching that potential goal that you're supposed to go to. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you're supposed to be in Chattanooga, Tennessee at such and such a time, and there's great work for you to do there and so forth like that, the devil will do everything he can to get you up in uh, Maine someplace, up in New York, get you going another direction, just so you don't get there. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And sometimes, we say here, sometimes he's ever so subtle, so slow, so smooth, that we don't even recognize that he's creeping up all the time. You know, that's how a snake does. Snake, mm -hmm. yes. A snake, if he's got these ball constrictors or work, they're going to get you. They move so slow, it's just almost like a little mm -hmm. more dry. The rat don't pay no attention to whatever it is. But nothing paying attention. He's just so smooth, just so far. <laughs> I scared you. I didn't even see her jump her feet even flew off the floor. Stop <laughs> 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 everything like she <laughs> We're gonna have to start bringing you start bringing some some deep pens or something. <laughs> some of these well, she uh, let me real quick. I said she had a testimony. Yeah. She jumped like that <laughs> on oh. Saturday night because we had gone. Uh, no, Sunday night. When was it? Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. She went and the brother prayed over her for her hearing. And she had an appointment at the doctor's today. And she had to have her TV cranked way up. And it would drive me crazy every time i go in her apartment to turn that thing down. And he prayed over her ears. And the moment that he took his hands like this, she jumped just like she did now. Because everything got so loud. And she went back to the doctor's today. There wasn't even any wax in her ears. Her ears are totally fine. It, she has her volume now down to 12 instead of 30. Wow. Oh, 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 Thank you. Oh, 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 so, <laughs> she's just jumping all over the place this week. I didn't know your eardrums, did I? Wow. It's something that would just one minute. Who can say our God's not real? Oh, he's real. <laughs> <laughs> he's real. That's why our minister says signs, wonders, and miracles. To prove who the true and living God is, to bring glory to his name, and to make believers out of all believers. So when doctors, things like that happen, and so forth, you know, and they have a shake She got to the I told the doctor. Did he? Yes, I did. What does that do to the doctor? <laughs> no. He was he was glad and he agreed but oh, because yeah. he tested my ears and he's they were gonna yeah. get her hearing aids. I said, let's just hold off on this. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that is where the signs and the wonders of miracles are. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. And give wow. God glory every time. Everybody say, My God. My God, God, God is not normal. He's not, he's not normal. normal. Then he's real. <laughs> right. I'm in the fish. My God is not normal. My God, God is not normal. normal. And I'm not normal. No, I'm not normal either. Somebody say that. Amen. How many of you don't want to be normal? See, when I was normal boy, when I was drinking and running and prison and all this kind of stuff, I was a normal boy. But as soon as I got saved and went and fell in love with Jesus, I said, "I say you're not normal." Well, guess what? I don't want to be normal anymore. That's right. Because when I was normal, I, I didn't, didn't want to live. I wasn't happy. But since I'm crazy now. <laughs> let, me, let me just stay crazy. Somebody say amen. He's amen. Back to normal. Like the, yes. the Frankenstein baby. Once normal. No, we are. Be normal. Abby Chosen normal. generation. That's right. <laughs> Chosen Chosen people. People. Chosen 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 we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, yes. a peculiar Two people. people. Yes, right. <laughs> now, how, how do you know, if God don't, if people don't look at you that you're peculiar, it's not me. You've got the real thing. 
When people start to look at you strange. Or your husband tells you you're going to end up in the loony bin at the York Hospital. <laughs> I said, not me, maybe you, but not me. <laughs> Why did you marry me? You should have been a damn nun. <laughs> oh. I told her, told her, told her. I said, you're right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the last time he was back here, God was out there and so forth. And I said to him, Lord, you're coming here to talk to me tonight. And I said, your wife has beautiful hair. And uh, he said, thank you. And I said, but did, did uh, your husband tell you the true reason? I said to him, I said, did your wife tell you the true reason she married you? He said, no. She told me that she married you because she took pity on you when he gave you a break. <laughs> <laughs> Someone say amen. Uh -huh. That's what my wife told me years ago. I said, why did you marry me? She said, I took pity on you and wanted to give you a break. <laughs> Someone say amen. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> Verse 18. <clears throat> but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Oh, my, 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 my. What's that first word? But. But. Explain that to me. That means however. However. Mm -hmm. Situation. Okay. Well, you need to know the verse before it. Mm -hmm. Say what? But you, well, you need to know the verse before it, which is the flesh, the the spirit. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not alone. Okay. okay. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not alone. What does that say? Uh, what, what that's saying is uh, if you're. Uh, if you're uh, doing what the Spirit wants you to do, you're not condemned by the law. Because the law condemns. That's right. That means you're on the grace of the Spirit. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Okay, let, let me bring it home a little bit clearer. But if you've been led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Okay, if you're in the flesh, you have to obey the law. Hmm. Follow me, please. Yes. Follow me. Yeah, and all the law. So, yes. Unless so, you be cursed. Yes. You're a man. That's right. The Ten Commandments comes to this. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be careful, mm -hmm. the other gods and all that. That is, in the flesh, you've got to keep the law, keep the commandments, keep the work. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the spirit, you don't try to do that, you don't want to let do that. Because you're in him. Anybody yes. say with me? Yes. 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 So, so if you're in the spirit, you won't have no trouble with the flesh. Somebody say that. If you're in the spirit, do you think you're going to have trouble with fortification? No. Lying? No. Adultery? No. Come on. No. The chickens, all, all, the, all these other words which we'll get into a couple. So if you're in the spirit, that don't bother you. You're with the Lord. Exactly. Yeah, well, your mind's not you're not only with him, you're in him. Can I explain when I say in him? Oh, I wish to God I get this. Where is that? Through to everybody. In him will be one with him. Yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. In his what? Courts with praise. praise. Is that talk about the spirit or is that talk about the flesh? Spirit. No. Flesh. flesh. Oh, praise and okay. Okay. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Courts with praise. Then into the holy. Praise is always what? Flesh. Flesh. <laughs> You can go to church and raise your hands and say hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done. That's praise. Mm -hmm. I give you all the glory and still be living in sin. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. People walks in the house of God still living in adultery and all this kind of stuff or, or whatever the sin is. Right. And they're still in here praising God. Hallelujah. And the devil is dancing right beside them. Someone say hallelujah. Standing in the fire, singing a song, and still be living in sin. Come on, talk to me. Even mm -hmm. people that had been baptized in the Holy Ghost, that leaked, that didn't stop full. So here they are in the flesh. They're definitely not in the Spirit of God. Flesh and Spirit is two different things. But why was a, the bell rent for the Holy of Holies? Why? Talk to me. I've told you many times before. Before we had high priest. So we have access to the Holy of Holies. Yes. He wants us to come into his gates, in his course, with praise and thanksgiving. We're headed for the Holy Holies, but nobody wants to go in there because if you go in there, now you're in him, you're in his presence, and it's all about him.
tell you it's all by him, holy, holy, holy. You're not thinking about adultery. You're not thinking about food. You're not thinking about punching Brother Joe in the mouth. Come on. You're not, you're not talking about how you can rip so and so off. You're, you're as he is. How do you know it? He that dwelleth in Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the place where flesh does not exist. When have you ever been, any of you, worshiping and so in the spirit, worshiping, your hands raised, your eyes closed, and somebody bumps you in the head like that or taps you in the arm? Sorry, I wasn't I needed that. I needed to use that as an illustration. When somebody bumps you like that, what does it do to you? Takes you out of it. It pulls you right out of being in tune in the spirit, the flesh, the body, the fleshly body touches and pulls. That is, that just like, so if we're really, really in and you're worshiping, you know, it's best to be where you're not going to be in a crowd. I move away or go to the back or stand by myself so many times. Let me tell you a couple of stories here. She's right what she's saying. But what she's telling you, you're not totally in the spirit yet. No. You're, no. you're in the but presence, you're, you're just going in. Yes. But here's but what happens. It pulls you up. Once that person goes in the spirit, they are completely gone from this earth. Sister Joan, you witnessed the preacher night towards Pittsburgh. A little girl, how old was she? Oh, gosh. Eight? Eight, something like that. The pastor's granddaughter. The pastor is still living in sin. Still smoking, living in sin. The poor church all my son. It's granddaughter's here. And I can't remember, did I call her up or something or how was it? But anyways, you lay hands on her, pray for her. And she went out in the spirit that she was 100% totally gone. I mean, her lips were like I said, and her eyes. Were, and her grandmother was over at and keep the pet on her so well, and trying to get her off of the side. And I had to rebuke the grandmother, the pastor, let her alone. That little girl was so far gone that she did not know what was. That has happened to me different times. So, and people that, when you get in the spirit, just why did Paul say, I knew a man about 14 years ago, rather than special spirit, I knew not. Uh, I was caught up in the third heavens to see things which is not speaking of speak this, that. Okay. See, when you get totally in him, flesh is gone. Yeah. See, Jack and I did that. We have we were joined hands and I have told him yes with my friend and we both left. I left and then he left. But I was still aware that I had a hold of their hands and that didn't pull me out. But what I was talking about is when you're you're getting to that place, it's just that easy for somebody to pull you back and but the enemy where, will. Where does that come from? That's a hindering spirit trying yes, to keep you from going. From going. Where you So but but once you are in him First time it ever happened to me. I'm going through the whole story. I walked into the church and so forth like this, but anyways, I, I went down. And Jesus walked up alongside me. I don't care, I'm not going through the whole story. He walked up alongside me and stood in front of me and so forth. And spoke to me and said, it's real. When I walked into the church, I glanced up at the clock. How many of you ever had a clock at uh, the hands that get so old the hands were Mm -hmm. dropped different position. I looked up at the clock and it was a quarter twelve. I walked in and so forth and immediately the presence of the Lord came up on me and I went down and started to cry. Jesus stepped up alongside of me and I, I, I was gone. I was gone. When I got up, I started to walk out and I thought, huh, what well these crazy clocks. It was four thirty. <coughs> but other clocks were nice. I was there all that time. How many of you know when you're in the spirit, time ceases to be. Mm -hmm. God is time. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Okay. So when you're in Him, flesh and time does not exist. Now th this is deep stuff. Mm -hmm. And th this is why when you go out and you try to preach or teach, most people say that. <laughs> you know, they could really care less. Tonight the Lord filled me fluently with my prayer language, baptism of the Holy Ghost. I 
tried to call my friend to tell her, but I finally got it, and I couldn't even talk in English. And for three hours, I spoke in tongues, and it felt like five minutes. Wow. And I went to bed, and I didn't know it, but he told me I was praying all night long out loud in tongues. He could wake up, go back to sleep, wake up, go back to sleep, and I still prayed in tongues. Wow. You know, my friends came to visit. I asked him to pass the butter at the table. I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> he filled me so full that I couldn't even speak in English. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where we should be. We should be so full of him that it should be hard for us to talk. Yes, yes. I have to take off and go to the bathroom just to let it out because I couldn't open my mouth without it coming out. <laughs> <laughs> like Brother Brandon, yeah. our, our picnic baptism thing mm -hmm. you guys have in life. He came up all that water mm -hmm. so he could get home. And guess what? He has never not changed. I mean, he is just, I mean, bam, that quick. And I mean, God made a complete yeah. change. Mm -hmm. just, just curious, how long did it take you? Years. How, how many years? Now okay. I want to share your testimony. No, I, I, I just want to know how no, long. No, that's okay. It was a good couple of years I struggled. Couple years, right? I struggled. And that, that's not long. The, I know, but it, it felt like an eternity. Yeah. And the first mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. I only got, I would go to say, Hallelujah, and it would go Hallelujah. It was like you'd feel my tongue going. But that's all I got. And I'm like, God, you said that it would come fluently. And so after two weeks of just one little syllable driving me nuts, I mean, I would dream. I'd open my mouth and go, and it was like machine gun bullets. I was dreaming this. So I went down in our family room, and all I did was sit there, and I lifted my hands. I said, Lord, I surrender my voice, my lips, my tongue to you. Let it flow fluently. Praise you, Jesus. And it was machine gun bullets from that point on. Wow. My kids come downstairs after two hours and after three hours and says, Mom, will you keep it down? We're trying to sleep. <laughs> because they could hear me upstairs. <laughs> but I couldn't contain it. There was no holding it in. <laughs> God does all these things to prove to us that it's real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to remember, when I went to church and so forth, I did not believe in this God. I beat my finger off that preacher about like 15 times. I mean, I really smacked him with my cell phone. So called him out of here. I said, you back off me, buddy. And he said, no, brother. I said, I'm not your brother. And I told him where all men come, come from, the black man, the Chinese man, and everybody. So forth. And I sat down in my back seat with my foot on, no shirt on, like this here, and so forth. She had all kinds of sicknesses, this and that, and so forth. And I guess about the third Sunday out of the church, he looks back at her and he says, God just spoke to me and said he's going to heal you tonight. I thought, oh, here we go with this kind of stuff. <laughs> he said, come on up here. She got up, walked up through him. He took this bottle. I never knew what he was doing. I never seen a bottle. He took this bottle of this morning on. He said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And he touched her. And man, he looked like somebody he just took a sledge and went, BAM! She was going after us. But that, she says this, that she said, I just threw it back. No, she didn't throw it back. She went, wham! <laughs> she bounced. And I can find out that shirt because I was always taking an emergency room and shit like that. Before I could even get to her, you know, she takes her left hand and she props herself up and she's as whiter than white. And she throws her right hand up in the air and started speaking this other language. She'd never been to church in her life. Wow. And she starts speaking this the other language so far. Man, I backed off quick. <laughs> and then I couldn't believe this. And then she, all she wanted to do was talk like Jesus. She wanted to fight with me no more and so forth. And I sit there one day, I go in the house, oh, man, this and that. I said, I'm going to ask you a question. And what? I said, I believe you love this Jesus more than me. And she said, yes, Jim, I do. I slammed that door so hard, Jesus picked her jump over the wall. <laughs> and I ran out the porch, shook my hand in the head. I said, now you stole my wife! And I went down and got drunk so <laughs> But she changed. Yeah, Jack doesn't say You know. He took my radio, my tapes, my Christian TV. He carried a big four bottle TV the whole way from one end of the house to the other and down the steps and said, don't you dare get the neighbor to bring it back up. He took my tapes and everything. He thought he could take God from me. He couldn't. How many of you can't? You can't. Mm -hmm. You might take the tape and the radio and so forth like that, but you can't take the whole of this out. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay, he said, are you going to say something? Well, I just wanted to mention as far as tongues go, um, my, uh, my obstacles was always doubt and unbelief. You know, I'd, I'd speak a few syllables, but 
then I question, was that really God or was that me just, was that, was that just wishful thinking on my part, you know, but, um, and, but, I mean, it took a while, but then I realized, but, you know, but then I realized that this, that the, uh, that the language actually came from mm -hmm. deep within my gut, and I could just start me talking to God, and all of a sudden, whoosh, it just wants to come up, and uh, I just realized, okay, that's not just me trying, mm -hmm. you know. That's really the Holy Spirit wanting to uh, intervene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, when it comes to me, that, and after I realized after about a year, mm -hmm. that was real. Then I wanted that. Mm -hmm. I looked at her and I said, I, I told God, I said, no, I don't understand this stuff, but I want what she's done. Mm -hmm. I couldn't feel it. I mean, no way in this world. That's how I stand in the church. I made yeah. my mind. <laughs> so I went on a fast. I said, seven days in a week. I'm going to fast four days. I'm going to stay in the church four days and four nights. I'm not going home. So I took my Bible. I went to church, fast and praying, seeking the new water and nothing. Praying. Praying in English. Seeking God. Nothing happened. Wow. Nothing happened. Wow. Nothing happened. No matter what I did, nothing happened. And one night, I walked into church. And I, the pastor said, uh, a couple of young teenagers there. He said, would you all come up together around the teenagers? He said, uh, let's just pray for them. Everybody went up, but I'm not going up. Why? Who am I? I don't speak in tongues. Why should I pray for them? So, anyways, I'm not going up. Mm. Pastor looked at me and said, Brother Humphrey, come on up. Well, I didn't remember a verse of the Bible says, Obey those who point over you, sir. He's a pastor. I'll come on. Yeah. I just stuck my hand in through like this. As soon as I stuck my hand in, I blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Backed off and so forth. And I heard a voice say, You just made that noise, that's not real. But the next day, I was just like a machine gun. Like, <clears throat> Somebody say, Amen. He'll <laughs> you know, prove to his room. She's laying on the floor, out, and we're praying for her to be filled. And her best friend thought I did something to her. And she's sitting back in the chair crying. What did you do to your mother? And I'm laughing my head off. She's sitting there, and she'd open her mouth, and her tongue would stick out, and it's going like this. And so she's trying to grab hold of it to stop it. <laughs> I never laughed so hard. She's trying to catch her tongue as it's electrocuted, and she's going. Trying to shut her mouth to hold it, in, and she couldn't. <laughs> And we wonder why people say this. Yeah, yeah anyhow. <laughs> Come on. Lord have mercy. Uh, I'll never says, forget that. Going, in, 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 in the Bible, when it happened in, in the Bible, they said they're drunk. Peter said, we're not drunk. You're supposed to say it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is the Lord of the So we say that. Okay. <laughs> One more time about this. They turned the heat off. So everybody said, I know. Come on again. Yeah. But if you be led. But, 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 if you be led of spirit, you're not on the law. Now the works of the flesh are these, which are, are so I'm going to ask uh, Sister Shirley to read the whole work, sir, until you get to uh, uh, verse, finish up with verse 23. You want me to read 19 through 23? Yep. Okay. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fortification, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, I don't know what that is. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, en envyings, murders, drunkenness, revealings, or revilings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay, now. You mentioned the seditions, that means divisions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Divisions, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, if you want to hear the definition of those words, burns means not in harmony, emulation, over-emulation, uh, wrath, violent anger, rage, Strife, you know what that is, sedition against lawful, lawful authority. I mean, there's a lot of people who stand up against no matter what God says or, or even the government says, something like that, you know. Heresy, religious opinion, contrary to the true doctrine of the church. Envy, jealous, rooting desire to have, and so forth like that. 
and uh, reviling speech to use of useless language. Help me to know love people who said they're Christians as a dirty, ugly mouth on. Of course, jesting falls in a lot of that. Huh? Of course, jesting falls exactly, in a lot of that. Exactly, exactly. Now, let's, let's go back here to verse 23, uh, or 24, 20, 25, 26. How many of you here believe in one saved and always saved? Do you believe in it? Explain this verse to me, brother. Paul talks about all the works of the flesh. A whole bunch of them, of course, that doesn't stop there. But he says something here. He says, uh, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of the flesh. Uh, he says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk after the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of these things here. Wait, okay, back, back up. Uh, I'm going too, too soon. Uh, let's go back to verse 21. Envying, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and of such like. Of the which I tell you before, and I've, I've talked to you, I told you before. As I have told you in times past, that they which do such things still shall go to heaven. Does that say that? <laughs> no. Talk to me, brother. What's it say here, brother? It says not. Let's read it one more time here. Maybe, maybe Paul's message. They up. shall not inherit. Because see, Paul, Paul is New Testament. Paul's the one who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So I think Paul knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So if one saved, always saved is true, then you tell me why Paul lists a whole bunch of these sinful things. And he says, once again, verse 21, envying, murder, drunkenness, revilings, and such and such like, of the which I tell you before, so he says he told you before, and as I told you in time past, so he told him time past, they which do such things shall not Inherit the kingdom of God. Oh! What happened? What, what do you do with this verse in Hebrews? God is the author of eternal salvation unto all them that what? Obey. Well, we're saved by grace. You don't, you don't have to obey anything. You're eternally secure. Give me one verse. There ain't none. Not even one. Who said that? I yeah, but the, those who those who are of Christ, they will obey. See what? Those who are of Christ, they will obey. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know, the, with the sealing of the Holy Spirit means oh. you're you're stamped of God. You're secure in Him. This and, and there are verses in the New Testament where it says you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Yes, one verse. One verse says. There's more more than one verse. This, this, when it says sealed, this means it's, it's, just this pretend this is a jar. I get saved, and this one of the Bible says, no man can take your salvation. So I, I'm sure his hand's over, but I can break the seal. There's a thing called backstabbing. The Bible says in the New Testament, this is a true proverb. And he which was washing the thing has been like a sow, has returned back to her wallet. Come on, talk to me here. Turn back to the wallet. Well, we'll, we'll still sin. We still sin because we're living in the flesh, but... That's where God says that He'll chastise us as as a loving Heavenly Father. He will discipline us, and that that's evidence, and that's another proof that we're eternally secure in Him. Okay, His chastisement lies on us. Let, let me ask you a question here. I want to hear you explain this verse to me. Tell me what Paul means here. So, well, if those who are of God can't practice sin. No, if you're a believer, if you you think that you can get away with continuous sinning and practicing? No way. No, but our inner heart's desire is not to sin, but because we live in this flesh and we're not fully redeemed. We're not fully redeemed from the flesh. We're still, like, like Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? There's that constant, like you're reading here, the flesh wages war against the spirit. Paul recognized that when he said, oh, wretched man. Yes. That I am. He will deliver me from this body of it's, death. It's always going to be, too. And there, as long as we live. But, and that's why it says we're to crucify the flesh uh, daily, but we fail at times. Let's, let's talk about that crucify. If he says crucify the flesh, 
Why should we worry about Christians who have the flesh after already? Well, we're through. not to worry. It's Christ working in us and through us. As you read in Philippians, it says it's Christ perfecting that work. He's working in and through us to okay, perfect that work until the day of redemption. Let's, let's go to seven of those and seven churches. But let's just turn to that right here real quick here and see if... How many of those churches... Well, yeah, I, I don't want to get sidetracked off your, your lesson, but... You, you asked if there was anybody here that believes in eternal security. Yeah. I'm going, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. well, there, there's nothing that I can do to say to God, God, your work was not good enough for me. I, I won't do that. No, no, nobody ever said that. Nobody yeah. ever said that. But listen, we are, we are kept by obedience here. Because this, why would he say, God is the author of eternal salvation, I want to all them obey you. So if somebody gets saved, and I know, I've got all kinds of members of friends and people that want to say the Lord is saved, and they can never talk their way out of this here. Why would God tell us, if you love and keep my commandments? Well, okay. Well, I should. If you don't, I'll be able to keep them. Okay. Then we go to the seven nations and seven churches. This is Jesus Christ speaking to the seven churches of that time, which still applies today. Let's go back and just look at that here real quick. And see what he says right here. And then explain this to me. See, see I'm just a double hillbilly. I just... I just think I believe what the Bible says, but you know, maybe I'm just stupid here. But let, let's go back here and read here where he says, uh, uh, Ephesians, or ch Revelation yes. chapter 2, to the angel of the church of Ephesus. So Sister Deb, Brother Mark will read verse 1. Revelation chapter 2, verse, verse 1. Now, all of you remember, when it says to the angel of the seventh church, who's the angel? The pastor. The pastor of the seventh church. So the, this letter is a five-step process. How did it get to the pastor? From who? From God to Jesus, from Jesus to the angel, from the angel to John, and John to the seventh church, to the pastor. So the pastor of the church has to read this to the congregation. So Michael, verse 1. Oh, yeah. Okay, I forgot. You didn't read. Verse 1. Who did read over here? Me and Shirley. No, Shirley. I don't read that. Right. Oh, she's me. Oh, you're me. Yeah. 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 Verse 1. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. <coughs> to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Ephesus. <laughs> well, uh, right. These things says he unto he who Hold it. holds the seven stars in his right hand. Not sure, not sure the church, okay, right. <clears throat> to walk in the mind in the midst of the seven. Golden of uh, wait. Okay, oh, I see. Candles. Okay. Candles. Now it says to the angel, to the pastor of the church of Jerusalem, write these things, saith he that holds his seven swords and seven pastors in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of his seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden yeah. candlesticks is the churches. Verse two says, "Honey, think verse two. I know thy works. And what, thy what's what's works, everybody?" No, not labors. Oh, that's right. Flesh. Your lifestyle, everything you do. Oh, okay. okay. Right. I know that works, and, and then it says, and thy labor. So the labors is what? Say physical work. Okay, go ahead, I. I know that I know that works, and thy labors, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And has found them liars. Okay, so these people in the church, she says, I know your patience. I'd like to not bear them which are evil. Sometimes I've been people me, and has tried them, which say they're apostles, who would say Christians, and they're not, and has found them liars. Verse 3, Brother Michael. Brother, please pay 